this is what's left of an Ashitaba plant after it finishes seeding. You'd get a bunch of babies that would come. It's the first true leaf. Should I try an Ashi sprout for you? It's very precious. Mm. Thank you, Ashi. Oh my goodness. Definitely packs a punch. Hey you guys, what is growing on in your garden right now? For me, I was about to top off this raised bed, really excited about it. I was going to get some winter veggies growing in this space. But then when I started looking closely, I noticed that there's been a bunch of Ashitabas that's been <laughs> sprouting here. Now this place used to be the home for the Ashitabas that towered well over six to eight feet tall. They finished up, I've collected those seeds, some seeds have dropped in this section. The wind has also blown some of the ashitabas, kind of scattered them all over the garden. So I'm seeing different ashitaba seedlings popping up in different places here, but especially in this area is very concentrated. So I thought I'd take this chance to talk to you guys about how ashitabas germinate and, um, and why I love growing them. And then near the end, I will show you guys one of the Ashitabas that I recently rescued. I am so glad I did it because it is doing amazing now. So Ashitaba, it is definitely one of the top three plants, leafy greens or vegetable slash herb, if you want to, however you want to call them. Uh, it's definitely on the top three of my list because they're not only beautiful, they are so easy to grow. I mean, they're easy in a sense where after you get them established and generally when they get about six inches or taller, you'll start noticing that they'll pick up the growth rate a lot faster than when they're seedlings. Ashitaba is definitely my top vegetable leafy green slash herb to grow because it is not only beautiful, but they're really wonderful for making tea, juices, super you know dense in nutrients like the minerals and the the b12 that you don't get from other most other plants but you get from ashitaba the bright yellow sap which is called chelcone is extremely medicinal and anti-cancer you don't start seeing those uh chelcone developing until the plants mature enough and also where they have to be well nourished for the chelcone to be very uh, visible so microgreens are definitely really good for you just like any type of types of microgreens like the broccolis or the kale microgreens ashitaba microgreens i bet you that they are super tender delicious and um, super nutritious however when you eat them at this young of stage you're not you're missing out on the chow cone ashitaba seeds can be easy or difficult to germinate. It really depends on the conditions. The germination rate is also not as high compared to other types of plants. So I will just, you know, patiently wait till these seedlings get to the appropriate size. I will then transplant them into individual pots and offer them on my website. I do have a plant seed shop. If you guys are interested, I will link it down below for you. It would be one of the ways that you can support this channel. Thank you all so much. So ashitaba, the seeds, I find that when I intentionally plant them, you know, like putting them in, sowing in a, a, a ceiling tray, putting a dome over with a light, a grow light, all that, it takes between, you know, anywhere between three to four weeks, even five weeks for them to start sprouting. There's different ways that you can get ashitaba seeds to sprout. One of the ways to seed them is to soak them overnight in some filtered water and then you would then put them in a moist paper towel uh, in, and then in a little baggie put in a refrigerator for a couple of weeks to get it to kind of chill because the cold temperature seems to help them to germinate. That seems to be the way to do it for most people. I have done it that way before, but I find that it was still difficult to do it that way. And I think the way, the reason you refrigerate them, now this is only my theory based on my experience, is that when the seeds are older, they 
would be harder to germinate. I also find that the germination rate is even lower when the seeds are old. The older the seeds are, the harder they will be for you to germinate. I've tried germinating seeds that are about three years old and germination rate is definitely a lot lower at that point. I'd really try to get the fresh seeds as fresh as possible to get them to germinate. Ashitabas grow really well out here in zone 10 and zone 9 winter. In places that actually have a really hard long freeze, they would go dormant. They will pop back up in the springtime, so be sure you would mulch them very heavily and uh, don't throw it away. You gotta wait for the spring to see if they would pop back up. So these plants enjoy the winter out here and uh, that's why I think they need like a some sort of like a cool time for them to seed. When it gets too hot, the seeds won't germinate. That's why in zone 10 for me right here, it is fall, heading into winter pretty soon. It is a really great time to sprout ashitabas and I would see these plants growing very beautifully in the garden. The ashitabas grow well in the cooler time. That's why you need to chill the seeds. But what I've noticed with my seeds is that uh, for me personally, I don't need to chill them, be probably because the seeds are really fresh and they've acclimated to the weather out here. So they don't require as long or as cold of a temperature to get the seeds to germinate. This is completely my own theory, you guys, uh, based on my experience, okay? Uh, so yeah, so after I harvest these seeds, they've dropped into the ground for about, I wanna say between one to two months already. This is, the, the start of these two baby leaves after one to two months and I'm seeing them germinating you know all over the place here the seeds are very um, high to um, you know very close to the surface they're pretty much in the surface it's just that when I randomly dump some mulch or dried leaves on top they're kind of just growing and sprouting on the top here now when you intentionally plant the seeds and you want them to germinate my best advice to you is that do it in the cooler season so for places that gets really cold and you get a hard freeze you can start them indoor with a grow light uh, you don't need any heating mats because this is not a a heat loving plant or you can get them started uh, late winter to uh, early spring or even throughout spring is a really good time to to get the seeds to germinate for places with mild winters like where I am at now in the fall and in the winter even up to uh, spring to mid spring before the heat kicks in is a really great time for me to get these seeds to germinate scatter them lightly all over the top surface of the soil and then either place in uh, a thin layer of uh, potting mix on top or you can scatter the seeds and then kind of just press it down a little bit. The seeds, I, it seems like they like, they need some light to germinate, kind of like carrots. They are part of the carrot family. So I would say grow or start ashitaba seeds similar to the way you start carrots from seed. I think that's probably a really good approach. And then keeping the soil moisture moist, not too wet, not too dry. Uh, be patient with it. It takes, you know, anywhere between three to five weeks to see them to start germinating, sometimes even up to two months. But usually I think within that month time, time frame is a pretty good time to see them to ger start germinating. And once they get to germination, of course, you would hit them with a lot of bright light without burning them, of course. And you can start this using some grow lights. I love using grow lights to get started with my seedlings. I love the grow lights that are dimmable, uh, uh, that you can adjust the, the brightness. That would really help with, you know, guiding along like the different stages of the plant's life. Humidity is also important in germinating them just like carrots. So keeping a humidity dome, or you can have a wrap the pot or the tray with a piece of plastic. Uh, you can also poke little holes all around to control the humidity better. Some people use cocoa core to start their seedlings. I love using Fox Farm Ocean Forest for a lot of my seeds and plants actually. 
So I would just use that sort of potting mix. And of course, I always use filtered water to water the seeds and even using just a spray just to kind of mist the seeds uh, at the beginning before they start germinating. Once the plants get to about an inch tall, I would start feeding them with some uh, worm casting uh, liquid mixed in water, even like a kelp liquid. Uh, yeah, so I would start feeding them nutrients once the plants are, reach about one to two inches. When they get to about three to four inches tall, that's when I would transplant them into you know, individual pots or wherever you want them to go. The plants definitely have a very slow start. So be patient with them, feed them with good nutrients. If you guys wanna know the types of nutrients I feed my plants, I will leave those list, uh, the list down below for you. I generally feed seedlings something really mild, a solution that's diluted a lot in water. And I would feed them once a week or even once every other week. All right, here's a super early stage before the stage of a micro ring. This is basically a, an ashi sprout. Should I try this? This is so precious, you guys. I'll try one for you. Thank you, Ashi. Mm, super tender, just like a really good uh, microgreen, but it definitely packs a punch of that Ashitaba intensity. <laughs> All right, I want to show you guys this plant that I recently rescued. Can you guys believe this is such a beautiful Ashitaba that was so dead about, I think, six to eight weeks ago. I dug up the base of this, actually didn't even know that it was an Ashitaba two months ago. I dug it up in the other side of this raised bed because I wanted to plant something new in. And that's when I noticed a, a little head, it's like a, the base of, uh, it's like the trunk of the Ashitaba. It was so unrecognizable. It was thick and still kind of firm. So I planted the base of this Ashitaba plant without knowing what kind of plant it was. I had like about one inch of soil over the top of the, the base, covering the base, hit it under, uh, have it under the grow light. And then just about one to two weeks after feeding it with good nutrients and a really bright light, I started seeing baby, just really young, small Ashitaba seed coming out, not seed, uh, leaves came out. Like, wow, the leaves were even smaller than this size. Can you guys believe that? This was like one of the, uh, um, the earlier leaves or stems that came up and then it started popping up these really mature stems that are so big and these leaves are so big and lush and the stem is so much thicker than the outer stem here. It has such a huge, uh, I think, contrast. Uh, the size of these stems is because this was originally a pretty mature Ashitaba that I don't know what happened because I do grow things in a pretty tight space here. It might have not gotten enough light or dried out in that section or for whatever reason, the plant went dormant. So when I picked up that bottom portion of this plant, it was still firm. So I knew that that was a good sign that it, you know, it didn't rot out. So I gave it a chance and I'm so glad I did. It's looking super beautiful, ready to go into the back into the raised bed pretty soon. Now it looks like there's two plants here, but they actually both come from one source. It was the bottom part of um, like the tuber looking part of the, the original Ashitaba. And sometimes they will give out kind of like a baby, like side shoots. And these two plants came from that one source. I can either kind of slice it and break this apart and I hope that they both would make it and turn them into two plants. Or I can just leave it as is and see how well they would do kind of like sharing the same core, I guess. But it's looking super healthy. I think I would love to experiment leaving it as is. That is it. I thought this was pretty interesting to share with you guys since I have never witnessed a side puff that get this healthy before. And I think it really got a really healthy start because of um, putting them under the grow light. And of course, feeding it with some tea that I brew and some 
worm casting diluted tea. Here is the end of the Ashitaba's life. After it flowers and seeds, it would dry out, give you a lot of seeds back in return, but this mother plant has moved on. It is actually the entire Ashitaba plant is edible, including the roots. Let me just pull this out for you guys. Uh -oh. I actually don't even, I usually like to cut down to the base so that the roots can feed the microbes. But in this case, I want to take it out so I can show you guys what the entire Ashitaba looks like. So here it is. This is the shorter one. The tall one is still really green, so I just want to keep it there longer. Anyway, so, ooh, sorry. Here it is. As you can see, it. So this is the trunk of it. Can't. S this is what it looks like. This plant just gets really hollow on the inside. When the flower stalk starts to form, the core of the Ashitaba would get really thick. And then eventually now it's actually hollowed out now that it's dried out. But yeah, pretty crazy, huh? This is a pretty cool walking stick. <laughs> Hope you guys find this information to be helpful. If you enjoy this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell notification button. If you're looking for plants and seeds, don't forget to check out my shop. I will leave a link of that as well as other ways that you can connect with me down below this video. Thank you so much, you guys. I'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.